We are finally here, guys. The VR revolution has begun. And we are blessed with not one, but two fantastic VR headsets. This is the HTC Vive, produced in collaboration with Valve as part of their Steam VR initiative. Now, at the time of this review, my Oculus Rift has yet to arrive, so I won't be comparing them directly. But rest assured, we'll add something about that at a later date. Now let's get the enormous nasty bit out of the way first. The HTC Vive costs $800, or around £600, not including shipping, and you need a super high-end PC to run it. Chances are, even if you think you've got a good PC, you probably need to upgrade it. For reference, I have been running this on a i7 4570, 8 gigabytes of RAM and an R9 290 graphics card. My graphics card is actually at the bottom end of what is acceptable, but I haven't had any issues yet. Everything has been super smooth. So what does that $800 get you? Well, in the box you'll find the headset itself with five meters plus of cable, long, long cable. A link box into which the headset plugs in, and then a USB, an HDMI, and a power plug, which then goes to your PC and to a power socket. That you'll also find two tracked controllers. Essentially, these give you a one-to-one -one control mapping for using in VR to interact. More on these later. Then finally, there's two lighthouse base stations. Little cubes that sit in the corner of your room, about two meters off the ground and pointed downwards in either corner of your play space. They can be up to five meters apart and this is how you define the square or rectangular area in which you're going to play. Now they come with two wall mounts if you're okay with screwing them to your wall. If you're not, they have a standard quarter inch thread so you can use any kind of tripod or snake clamp that's designed for a camera. But each base station also needs to be plugged into a power socket. So it took me about 20 minutes to get everything plugged in and set up, not including rearranging the room, but essentially it's not a huge undertaking. It's not so let's talk about the hardware itself. The headset it has two screens in it, 1200 by 1080 for each eye and refreshes at 90 hertz. They use Fresnel lenses to give you a wide field of view and a nice sweet spot in the middle. And this is the same as the Oculus Rift as well. In terms of the actual screen hardware that you're getting inside, they're very similar. The only real difference on the headset is that the Vive doesn't come with built-in headphones. It has a breakout headphone jack here. HTC does supply you with some in-ear buds, but I'm not a big fan of those. You can, of course, plug in your own headphones like we've done, but Bear in mind this makes it a little bit of effort with all of the cables and you have to be careful when you're taking it off again. You need to take your headphones off first and then the headset. So it's a little bit awkward, but meh. From a comfort perspective, I didn't really notice any issues with the Vive. It's quite comfortable once you've got it on and settled. And for glasses wearers like myself, you need not worry as long as your frames are small enough. There's indentations on the side here and you can actually put it on right over the top of them with no problems at all. If you have really big frames, then you might have a problem, but I didn't experience anything. They weren't pinching on the side of my face as some people have reported. The so-called screen door effect is only really noticeable in dark menus. However, the Fresnel lenses do lead to a lot of blurriness around the edges, but there is a wide sweet spot in the middle. They do also suffer from some lens flares whenever you have a really bright object on top of a dark background. However, this isn't really a problem once you're inside of games themselves. It's more of a problem when you're in loading screens and there's a big bright logo, for instance. Outside of that, didn't really notice it that much. As an Oculus Rift DK2 owner, to compare the two is like night and day. It, the image quality is just absolutely stunning. The red quality and sharpness even of text, it just looks incredible in comparison. The controllers and the virtual tracking that they have is just some of the most incredible technology I've ever seen. It's so accurate that if you wanted to, someone could throw the controllers at you and you could catch them. It's mapped that quickly and that accurately. In practical terms though, it means that you can put the headset on, completely block off your vision, 
and then look down and you'll still see where the controllers are placed on the floor and you can pick them up. They also have a clicky trackpad in the middle here, similar to the Steam controllers, and I'm not so keen on these. It depends upon how the game in question is using them, but in some games they have you click on the controller and then spin it in order to reorient yourself when you teleport. It's not exactly intuitive, it's a bit awkward. Just as a big clickable button, they're fine, obviously, and as a scrolling trackpad, it's fine. Another thing that the controllers bring to the table are small force feedback motors for haptics. And far from being just a simple rumble pack, they're actually a lot more nuanced. For instance, the best use of it I've seen so far has been in the lab's longbow demo, where as you are notching an arrow and pulling back, you can actually feel the string getting more taut as you pull it back. It really adds to the sense of immersion. The biggest differentiator between the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift at the moment at launch is that out of the box, the HTC Vive enables room scale experiences. And this is such a huge feature, which means you can literally walk around your virtual environment. Now I'm no stranger to VR. I have an Oculus Rift DK1 and DK2, but the difference with room scale was absolutely mind blowing. Words really cannot describe the feeling. It's something that you have to try for yourself and you're gonna have to take my word for this. Now, not all games designed for Steam VR are going to take advantage of your whole room. Some will be seated or just standing experiences, while some actually have a minimum required play space of say two meters by 2.5 meters. Either you have that or you can't play the game. Some will also scale to take advantage of your entire room. Oculus, meanwhile, has made it clear that although their tracking solution should probably support room scale experiences, once you've got the other camera and some tracking controllers, it's not the focus of their software lineup. One other defining feature of the Vibe that's worth mentioning is this front-facing wide-angle camera. And there's a couple of modes that you can enable for this, but the most useful one I found is double tapping the Steam button in order to bring up a view of the outside world. It has a kind of Tron mode effect on it, and it's not exactly one-to-one -one mapped since there's only one camera and it's a wide angle and it's below where your eyes are. It's sort of like a 360 degree video that's been remapped onto a circle around you, but it is good enough to just briefly interact with the world around you. I don't want to talk about software too much because we'll probably do a launch title roundup at a later date. However, I will briefly mention some of my favorites. The Vive actually comes with Tilt Brush, a VR painting application by Google, and Job Simulator, a sort of office sim, where you're in a future where robots have taken over all of our jobs and they've built museums for you to try job. Valve has also produced a free collection of mini games called The Lab. If you've seen the Aperture Robot Repair demo, no doubt, on some YouTube videos, then that's one of the eight experiences that are within that app. My personal favorite is Longbow, which is where you're defending your castle by shooting a bow and arrow at these little guys that come and attack you. It is to the HTC Vive as Wii Sports was to the Wii. It's just something you're gonna try out first and serves as a great introduction for your friends and family. From the paid lineup, I really liked Audio Shield, a VR successor to Audio Surf, a rhythm action game where you can load in your own MP3s and then dance the night away as you stand there fending off incoming balls of light. It sounds so simple, it's actually really compelling. Vanishing Realms is a dungeon hack and slash adventure game. You actually wield a sword and a shield and you actually fight the monsters. Brits, if you remember the 80s TV show Nightmare, it kind of feels like you're playing that. I also liked Final Approach, which is unique in that you're playing at the scale of God and you use your godlike hands to guide the little aeroplanes down safely to the runway. It feels like you're playing with a little toy box, just lots of fun. The point is that there's a lot of content already just at launch and it's only going to get better. You're bound to find something you like and you may even discover that some old genres you, you maybe didn't like are actually completely different in VR and take on a whole new meaning. So is the Vive worth $800 plus the cost of upgrading your PC? Yes, absolutely yes. 
This is going to change the world, or at least gaming it is going to change forever. Maybe not immediately, and maybe not this generation, it does still feel a bit like it's only for early adopters. But believe me, this is only the tip of the iceberg, and it is just incredible. Now my Rift is arriving tomorrow, and I'm excited to check that out and compare the two, but right now I think the room scale experience is really a game changer for me. Anyway, be sure to check out my full written review, and we've got another pre-order of the Vive on its way, which we will be giving away to one lucky reader. Head on over to the link in the description to enter the competition now, type in the code you see on screen for some bonus entries, and please subscribe to this channel to be notified of upcoming weekly giveaways and more from all of us at makeuseof.com. Look out for the Oculus review within the next couple of weeks, where we'll also be giving away an Oculus Rift and Oculus Ready PC to go with it. Don't miss that. Thanks for watching.